Well, good day traders and welcome to the new trading week. And if we look at the board straight off the bat, um, I think if you look at the FX markets, that's an interesting one because dollar yen pushing 108 at the moment. That's Asia's reaction to what we saw on Friday night. Obviously, when we spoke this about this on Friday, we saw that New York Fed pushing back, walking back what we foresaw from John Williams and uh, Richard Clarida as well. They're fairly explicit speeches, which made us believe that a 50 basis point cut from the Fed next week would be a realistic situation. Now, obviously, with the New York Fed walking that back, and then we saw from the Wall Street Journal's article suggesting that a 25 basis point cut was the one that was most warranted, the markets have reacted to that quite aggressively. And we've seen that the rates market now pricing about an 18% chance that we get a 50 basis point cut. So it seems that everyone's very much on the same page here that we are going to get a 25 basis point cut next week. And you can see that Asia have had a chance to react to that and dollar yen's pushing the 108 level. But as you can see with the table, there hasn't really been too much in the way of US dollar flows across the other G10 pairs. Um, and I think that's now that the, the, we, we get into what we get for the data for this week in the US, there isn't a lot really to draw. We know there's no more Fed speakers ahead of the FOMC meeting. There's a blackout period there. And that's why John Williams' speech was so important to markets. Yeah, he was one of the last people to speak. And the fact that he came up with such an explicit speech, everyone thought, well, you know, he's telling us a lot of information. He is guiding us to that 50 basis point cut. So that's why we've seen this kind of miscommunication from the Federal Reserve. And I think a lot of what we've seen over the weekend has been around how the Fed do inter in interact with financial markets. If we have a look at Aussie dollar, well, you know, we're not really seeing too much. There's there's not a lot to drive in the Aussie this week, and I think that's reflective of what we're seeing there. There's not a lot of drive in China as well. Uh, I would say that, that, that throughout this week, as we go into tomorrow, we've got uh, Christopher Kent speaking. He's one of the RBA members. He'll be speaking at half past eight. And then uh, on Wednesday at five minutes past one, uh, the RBA governor, Mr. Lowe, will be speaking at a luncheon. And again, will he give us any kind of clear in insight as to what's going to happen? If you have a look at market pricing around Aussie rates at the moment, we've got a 66% chance that we get a November cut. So we're not going to see too much in the data flow this week to really influence there. And if you look at implied volatility in the Aussie dollar, it's pretty low. They're not expecting fireworks. In fact, we're expecting less than a 50 point move up or down in the Aussie through this week. If we have a look at Euro dollar, now we've opened on a pretty flat note. We've, we're down about two pips at the moment, 112.19. Um, I'm not even sure it's the currency market you really want to be looking at this week. I think if we're going to get, um, we, with all the data that we've got in Europe this week, we've got the PMI series coming out in Germany on, on Thursday. We've got the IFO survey and that just comes out just before we get the obviously what's the highlight of the week which will be the ECB meeting which comes out at quarter to 10 Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, if you look at implied volatility in, in euro dollar, it's not overly high. We can see that sitting around 6% for the weekly implied vol. What does that mean in layman's terms? It means that we use that into the Black-Scholes formula to get an understanding of the expected move up or down. It's just around sort of 70 odd points or 78 pips um, either side. So the market's saying, yeah, with a 68.2% degree of confidence that we could see um, euro dollar moving down 78 points, we could see it moving up 78 points from here. And that's what we've got to consider as we go into the ECB meeting, which is the event risk of the week. Um, yeah, will, will we get rate cuts? Probably not. The market's discounting a small element of rate cuts in the market. They probably won't happen. But what we will see is, is whether we see a strong signal for asset purchases, probably for that September meeting. And also, will they change their guidance to give a much more flexible stance as to when they cut rates and the market's expecting them to cut so in the coming months there as well. So the question is, is, is will they cut rates? Probably not. But what would the outlook look like and will it be sufficiently dovish to warrant the kind of pricing we've got in the market at the moment and that's where we see the volatility playing through but we're at 78 points uh, with that one standard deviation the market's not expecting fireworks to play through what we could see the disappointment play through is the equity markets and if you have a look at equity markets at the moment the DAX is down about 12 points in fact there's a sort of a sea of red, but it's not exactly uh, you know, big moves at the moment. Asia's been pretty flat on the session. A little bit of selling coming through in Hong Kong. Uh, but the German market, that 112.248 uh, there, I think that's an interesting one. As we get through to the figure there, 112.200, um, there's some really strong support playing through. So if we're going to get disappointment this week from the ECB, I'm not saying it's going to happen. Mario Draghi will have to bring his dovish game to that situation. Uh, but if we don't get, if we get disappointed, I think the equity market's going to be a better short than we're going to see a better better long from the euro dollar situation. So I think DAX through this horizontal support level at 12, uh, 12,200 I think could be a better short than a long euro dollar from disappointment from the ECB. We're also watching what happens in earnings this week. You know, there's a number of companies coming through, as you can see through this chart here. You know, I've labelled a few that we'll be offering through our services. Um, but I think Tesla's probably going to be the one that will be, see the most activity from clients. Clients love this stock. It's a really highly speculative stock, has big moves around earnings. The average uh, move that we've kind of seen over the last quarterly 
earnings is around 7% or so. The employed move um, for options pricing for this quarterly earnings that comes out this week, as you can see highlighted green, is 6.4% or 6.2%. So the market, again, is expecting a big move. My advice here as well is, is when you do expect big moves, you know, that has to be reflected in your risk management, moving your stop loss further away potentially. And of course, that means reacting to a smaller position size. So we are watching that one closely. Again, yeah, so we're watching very much what's happening in financial markets this week. I think the ECB and European markets are probably the epicenter. Also watching what happens in, in sterling assets with the confirmation tomorrow of who will be the next uh, Prime Minister and the Tory leader. Obviously, everyone, everyone's expecting Boris Johnson and whether, whether Philip Hemmons steps down as a result of that situation. But a lot of uh, talk around the, what's happening in the UK politics. And again, you know, we can see um, the pound fairly flat on the open today.